Hello everyone and welcome to Church at Home. Today we're thinking about the welcome and invitation that God offers to each and every one of us to know him, to be his friend. And so we're going to start with one of our Bible readings that, re that Colin is going to read for us. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we shall share a meal together as friends. There was a time in our village communities when doors were never locked, they were left open, children ran in and out from different people's homes and if you knew the people in a house you could just walk in and nobody would think anything of it. Today, which was Sunday if you were watching sometime this week, Holy Trinity was open for an hour for private prayer. To comply with the government's guidelines, the front and back doors will have been left wide open to help with the flow of air in the building and to reduce the repeated touching of handles and again, you could just walk in. If you'd come to one of our churches before lockdown at the right time, you wouldn't have had to knock on the door because the church is open to anyone. You can just walk in. Over the weeks that we've been doing church at home, I hope you have pre appreciated the welcome to join us, whoever you are, whenever you choose to watch, and wherever you are from, physically and spiritually, whether you live in Northumberland or far away, whether you feel close to God or far away, whether you feel strong in your faith, whether you have many doubts and questions, whether you're new to exploring faith or whether perhaps you've returned and are thinking again about a Christian faith that you knew when you were younger. We are all welcome as we travel together and as we come together and meet like this as church, as we learn and explore more of that love that draws us close and draws us close to each other and says, you are welcome. So as I begin, I light our candle. To remember God's presence with us now. So let's take a moment to think about what we're doing and what we're saying today as we come to God and as he comes to us. Please join in with the words in blue. Dear God, we come into your presence and recognise you with us now. We thank you for your welcome. Thank you, God, for coming to us. We come, we come to, to you. Thank you, God, for inviting us to know you. We want, we want to, to know, know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the pains and insults that you suffered for us to be our Redeemer, friend and brother. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Going to play a modern song now by Paul Fields called God of the Moon and the Stars, which reminds us and reassures us that whoever we are, whatever we have done, God still wants us to know him and his love and invites us to come to him. God of the moon and stars God of the near and far God of these fragile hearts We all I come to you God of our history God of the future that will be What will you make of me? God of the meek 
weak and mild God of the reckless and the wild God of the unreconciled I come to you God of our life and death God of our secrets unconfessed God of our every living breath I come to you God of the rich and poor God of the princess and the whore God of the ever open door I come to you God of the unborn child God of the pure and undefiled God of the pimp and pedophile I come to you God of the war and peace God of the junkie and the priest God of the greatest and the least I come to you God of the refugee God of the prisoner and the free God of my doubts and certainty I come to you That's quite a hard-hitting song in places, but I really love it because it's true. God comes to us, we come to him. I'm going to show you on screen now a famous painting by Holman Hunt. The original hangs in Keble College in Oxford and there's a copy in St Paul's Cathedral. It's called Light of the World. Jesus said, I am the light of the world and it's a really helpful image what we have is a man standing at a closed door holding a lit lamp. Holman Hunt himself explains what he painted and meant for us to see. The closed door is the obstinately shut mind, the person who won't even think about who Jesus is or what faith could mean or who will make up their own explanations and reasoning. The weeds represent neglect and the things that hinder us. You can feel the way they have grown and overgrown, showing the door hasn't been opened for quite a while. You might be someone who's been disappointed and let down by faith or church, and the weeds have grown quick, thickly over your heart and mind. There's a bat, but it's very difficult to see, flying in the top darker part of the painting, and that is symbolic of ignorance. 
Jesus comes as light in the darkness to show us the way, to help guide us and show us how to live better lives than we can on our own. Jesus also sees our darkness, knows our weaknesses, still loves us and helps us face them too, because he doesn't condemn us to failure and leave us there, but says, invite me into your life and we can do it better together. If you look carefully, there isn't a handle on this outside of the door. This emphasises that when Jesus knocks on the door of your heart, it is only you on the inside who can respond and decide to let him in. In the reading that Colin read for us, Jesus says, Look, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus is polite. He knocks on the door of our hearts and he waits. He doesn't rudely force his way in or assume that you want him to come in. He's asking if he's allowed to come in. He's asking if you will let him in. We don't need to be embarrassed about the state of our untidy lives with God. When we dare to open up our lives to him, he won't look in and say, well, you know, maybe I won't come in, it's a bit messy in here. I thought of another Bible reading which talks about God and welcome, and Fiona's going to read for us now. Today's reading is taken from Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them and the disciples spoke sternly to them. Jesus saw this. He was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not stop them, for it is such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as little children will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The parents brought their children to Jesus. They knew Jesus was special. They wanted their children to be blessed, to have them meet Jesus, to be touched by this special man. Some of you perhaps were brought up going to school, uh, Sunday school or going to church. I was. Some of you were, might have been taught the stories of Jesus, having them read to you at home or school. I love it that at Grange View School, the children here still hear the stories of Jesus because it's a Church of England school. It doesn't mean all the parents are Christian themselves, but these children are being given the opportunity to grow up knowing something about God, Jesus, and the faith that we share as Christians. It's a bit like the parents now are bringing their children to Jesus to ask them to bless them, to ask him to bless them. This also happens when people bring their babies or children to be christened, to be baptised at church. They're setting them off in the right direction on their spiritual journey. They are being brought to be touched by God and blessed. This story also tells us something about adults. Some adults think mistakenly that they know better about spiritual things just because they're older and so are meant to be wiser. Here, that's represented by the disciples. In their day, women and children weren't given much respect at all. The disciples didn't think the children were worthy of meeting Jesus and shouldn't bother him. Jesus quickly and sternly corrected them, saying that we're all to come to God like these little children. And what are children like? How would you describe children? Open-hearted? teachable, uninhibited, natural, receptive to new ideas, those who are easily, those who easily and quickly recognise goodness and kindness. They're carefree, unworldly, straightforward, unsophisticated, honest, those who trust easily. So what are you like with God or Jesus? Distant, defensive, awkward? Or do you feel comfortable, welcomed, at home with him, at ease? Jesus says we are to be like children to receive the kingdom of God. We're to be open-hearted to Jesus, welcoming, receptive, trusting, 
teachable, willing to listen and learn. It certainly puts us in our place and challenges us, doesn't it? But this is faith, put simply and in an uncomplicated way. The children loved being with Jesus and Jesus loved being with them and he blessed them. That is how we can experience his love too, by believing we too will always be welcomed as the children of God and seen as his children in his eyes whatever age we are. Can our prayer be, Lord, I come to you just as a little child. I want you to bless me. I'm going to play another song called Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Worship can mean singing and praying, but in this song, I think it also means that we acknowledge who God is, that he is our God, that we bow our knee to him, that we're accepting who Jesus says he is, and who he wants to be for us and to us, our saviour and our friend. To be putting our trust in him, we come to him to bring our hearts in worship to honour him.
Janet's going to lead our prayers for us now and after that Pauline's going to read from Matthew chapter 11 verses 25 to 30. Dear Lord, we thank you that you always welcome us into your house and into your love. As we pray for your church at this time, we think of all the various and varied ways we have discovered to spread your message of love while church buildings are closed. We ask you to help everyone who is learning to use new technologies in your service. And we especially pray for those involved in the drive-in church today in Darlington. As lockdown is eased, we are faced with decisions about how far we go back to the old ways of worship and how far we continue with the new ones which have attracted and engaged new congregations. So we pray for your guidance for these discussions. Governments throughout the world are taking decisions about allowing their citizens to resume work, social lives and travel safely. We ask you to guide them in their decision making and to help us all to respond sensibly to our new freedoms as the hospitality industry reopens. For the past few weeks, we have been unable to share the hospitality of our houses with our families and friends. We ask you to ensure them, sure they know we have them in our minds, our hearts and our prayers. In our locality, we pray for the people of Garth Lane, Castle Mound, Widrington Farm, Holy Trinity Church, Ena Street, Mary Street, Edith Street and Dancer's Studio. We pray too you will comfort all who are ill at this time and strengthen those who are caring for them, remembering especially those whose treatments have been put on hold because of the pandemic. Lord, keep all of us safe in your loving care at these uncertain times and help us to remember you are always there to listen to our prayers. Amen. A reading from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, taken from the New International Version of the Bible. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is another passage in the Bible where Jesus is saying how important it is that we come to God as little children with that same openness and attitudes so we can recognise who God is when Jesus the Son reveals him. Do you know that God is and has always been, since your life began, been revealing himself to you? Can you recognise his voice? Have you heard him knock? Will you let him in? I've asked Colin if he'd read this, the reading that he read at the beginning again, 
Not because he got it wrong, but it's slightly different this time. You just watch. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Elaine is now going to read a poem by George Herbert as it fits in so well at this point. It's simply called Love, although I thought it was called Love Bade Me Welcome. It reminds us that this is what God is offering us, a relationship of love. Not rules and obligations to earn our way into heaven, not trying to be perfect people and to please God, but living a life knowing that we are loved by God. Love bade me welcome, yet my soul drew back, guilty of dust and sin. But quick-eyed love, observing me grow slack from my first entrance in, drew nearer to me, sweetly questioning if I lacked anything. A guest, I answered, worthy to be here. Love said, you shall be he. I, the unkind, ungrateful? Ah, oh, my dear, I cannot look on thee. Love took my hand and smiling did reply. Who made the eyes but I? Truth, Lord, but I marred them. Let my shame go where it doth deserve. And know you not, says love, who bore the blame? My dear, then I will serve. You must sit down, says love, and taste my meat. So I did sit and eat. Before we finish, I want to suggest that if we were to come to God more often, trusting not in our own wisdom and learning, but relying on him and his love for us, we would experience more of his peace and rest and contentment in our lives. Life isn't free of problems. We do get weary, heavy hearted, burdened, don't we? I know I do. But when we can trust Jesus and come to him quickly and readily, when he lives in our hearts and our lives, then we can know we are sharing these burdens and not carrying them alone. I've got some images for you to look at on screen now. You know the expression, two is better than one, and it certainly looks like it's working well here, whatever age we are. However, you do have to be going in the same direction. And of course, more than two works really well, doesn't it? Lovely example here. A problem shared is a problem halved. These pictures are what Jesus is teaching us, that to do it together with somebody else is a great support and a great help. In the passage, Jesus refers to a yoke. The yoke was the wooden shoulder frame that held two animals together side by side as they worked and walked together. Jesus is offering that we take on his yoke, his teaching, which is about knowing him, trusting him, like little children. Here we can see animals walking side by side, working together. Jesus offers us rest and peace despite the burdens as we share them with him. The young oxen learned how to pull the plough or walk the treadmill by being yoked to older, wiser oxen who knew a thing or two about life and hard work and that the way to do it was not to rush ahead and get out of step, but to walk steadily, step by step, in time with each other. Jesus invites us gently and humbly to walk with him, step by step, not trying to rush ahead, but to work with him, watch him, and learn with him through all of life, the hard, difficult stuff of life. Shared with him the Son of God, the Saviour of the world, who carried that world and all of our burdens on his shoulders on the cross. 
to give us life and peace. He says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Don't try to do it on your own, but invite him to live in you and in your life. Our last hymn today is Let Us Build a House Where Love Can Grow. And remember, it isn't just talking about the building, the church, although it does talk about that. It's about the family of God, all his children, all of us, and him, our Father. We are all welcomed into the family of God. Build a house where love can dwell And all can safely live A place where saints and children tell How hearts learn to forgive Built of hopes and dreams and visions Rock of faith and vault of grace Hear the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong. Many thanks to Colin, Pauline, Fiona, Janet and Elaine, and as always to Ian. And a final blessing. May God our Father surround you, his child, with his love. May God the Son walk step by step with you, beside you, daily. May God the Holy Spirit live in your hearts and give you strength to face all that this coming week may bring. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Hope to see you next week. <laughs>